Kia ora tato. Um, welcome back. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to look at constructing equations of curves through particular points as our second application of linear systems. So we've got a situation where we know a number of points on a curve. For example, we know point, we know that two points must give us a line, and we want to find a certain equation that we know should pass through them. Okay, so we'll start with that very example. We'll start with the equation of a line through two points because we already kind of know how to do this, but we're going to interpret it in a slightly different context here because the method that we go about solving this one we'll be able to use to solve in all sorts of different contexts as well. So we're going to dive straight in and we want to construct the equation of a line through two points x1, y1 and x2, y2. So we're going to start by the fact that we know that the general algebraic equation of a line is ax plus by plus c, or sorry, ax plus by is equal to c, or equivalently, ax plus by minus c is equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in our two points, and what this will give us is two equations, but the unknowns in this equation are actually going to be the coefficients a, b, and c. So it's a little bit of a head scratcher to try and wrap your head around this because we're not used to these coefficients being the unknowns, but they're the things we want to find here. So our two equations would be ax1 plus by1 minus c equals 0, and ax2 plus by2 minus c also equals 0. So the things that we know are the x's and y's, and the things we don't know are the a, b's, and c's. So we can rewrite this in matrix form as the matrix x1, y1, negative 1, x2, y2, negative 1, times the vector a, b, c is equal to 0, 0. Okay, so that's, maybe we'll just, just jump in with an example. So to find the line through two points, we'll make our two points the points 1, 3, and negative 1, 4. The system we'd solve would be the matrix 1, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 4, 1, uh, negative 1, see where the, the points coefficients went in, sorry, the point values went in, and then the unknowns are ABC equals 0, 0. So let's go ahead and solve this by using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So first off, it's a homogeneous system, so that means I'm not going to bother augmenting the zeros on because they'll just stay as zeros no matter what row operations I do. So I'm just going to reduce the coefficient matrix directly with the understanding that it's kind of an equal zero on each equation tacked in. Okay, so my first row operation is going to be row 2 goes to row 2 plus row 1 to get a zero beneath that first one. And that will give me the coefficient matrix 1, 3, negative 1, and 0, 7, negative 2. Okay, so this is our decision point in time when we come to solving systems. So we have one free variable, which will be C, and two pivots, which will be A and B. So this means we want to continue on to reduced row echelon form. So we'll take row two and we'll multiply it by a seventh so that the second pivot becomes a one. And our matrix will then be one, three, negative one, zero, one, negative two sevenths. And then we'll clear above that second pivot to get to reduced racial on form, which will be row 1 goes to row 1 minus 3 row 2, or we'll have the matrix 1, 0, negative a seventh, and 0, 1, negative 2 sevenths. Okay, so let's now write down our general solution. So our free variable is C, so we'll let C equal T, then this will translate to B equals 2 sevenths T, and A equals 1 seventh T. Now it does make sense that we have infinitely many solutions here, because any multiple of the equation ax plus by equals c also represents the same line. So we should have expected this to happen. So we can choose any t that we like, um, and I think the obvious choice is going to be t equals 7, so we don't have any sevenths floating around anymore, which will give us a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals 7, which translates to our line equation being x plus 2y is equal to 7. Now it's worth, um, if you've got a bit of time, comparing that to other methods that we've used of constructing lines to check that we actually wind up with the same answer. Okay, so you might at this point be wondering why we went to all this trouble when this is a problem that we already know how to solve. 
Well, it turns out that we can take the same approach to constructing all kinds of different things, so long as it's linear in the coefficients that we're after. Okay, so let's, for our second example, let's try something a little bit trickier. We want to find the equation of a circle that goes through three points. And let's go for the points 1, 2, negative 1, 4, and 2, 3. Okay, now it's always true that we can find a circle through, through three points, so long as they're not in a straight line. In fact, that could be a, something you could think about later as to what would happen in that case. But the general equation of a circle is usually written as x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Um, so a, b is the center of the circle, and the radius is r. Don't worry if you haven't seen this before, just um, and that, if, if that's the case, just, just trust me. <laughs> so as it's currently written, finding a, b, and r won't quite work because a and b are kind of buried inside the equation. They're not standing alone. So what we're going to do is do a little bit of algebra to slightly rearrange our equation here. So first off, we'll expand the parentheses. So we'll get x squared minus 2ax plus a squared plus y squared minus 2by plus b squared minus r squared is equal to 0. Okay, so far so good. And then we'll rearrange it a second time. To, well, first off, we'll replace r squared minus a squared minus b squared with a new value c. Then our equation will become 2ax plus 2by plus c equals x squared plus y squared, where c is r squared minus a squared minus b squared. Now I'd encourage you to pause the video at this point and just double check the um, rearranging there so that you're comfortable with why we turned the equation into this one um, and that you trust the algebra that I just did. So notice I've rearranged it so that the unknowns, which are now a, b, and c, are all on the left hand side. Um, and then the things involving purely things we know, which will be the coordinates, x's and y's, are on the right hand side. So if we have three points, x1, y1, x2, y2, and x3, y3, and substitute them in, we get three equations in a, b, and c. These are 2x1 times a plus 2y1 times b plus c is equal to x1 squared plus y1 squared. Um, 2x2 times a plus 2y2 times b plus c is equal to x2 squared plus y2 squared, and then 2x3 times a plus 2y3 times b plus c is equal to x3 squared plus y3 squared. So remember, our unknowns are a, b, and c, and now those are all linear equations in those three unknowns. So let's make it even clearer by putting it in matrix form. We'll get 2x1, 2y1, sorry, 2y, 2x1, 2y1, 1, on the first row of the coefficient matrix. We'll get 2x2, 2y2, 1 on the second row. We'll get 2x3, 2y3, 1 on the third, and that's all times a, b, c, is equal to x1 squared plus y1 squared, x2 squared plus y2 squared, and x3 squared plus y3 squared on the right hand side. So if we put in our particular three points, um, the system becomes, and this time I will write it as an augmented matrix, it becomes 2, 4, 1, 5. Um, then we have negative 2, that's twice negative 1. 8, that's twice 4. 1, 17. Okay, 1 squared plus 4 squared, that's uh, 17. And then we'll have 4, 6, 1, so twice the coordinates, 4 and 6, then 1. And then 13, which is 4 plus 9. Okay, so again, let's practice using Octave or MATLAB um, to solve this problem for us. Now, again, I'm going to use the Octave command line because I quite like that approach when we're just working a short calculation because it has less sort of visual clutter going on. Okay, handy tip. If you type in format rat as a command, now rat is short for rational, then what will happen is instead of displaying decimals, Octave or MATLAB will attempt to display fractions instead. Okay, so that's quite nice because we expect that our result here will involve some fractions. Um, but it, just a little note that it can lead to some weird results if you put in something like square root of 2. But here, it's going to be super useful. If you want to convert back to normal, type in format short. 
if you like, or format long if you want to have heaps of decimal places. So I'm just going to enter my augmented matrix this time directly as A, and I will use the reduced row echelon form, RREF command, to get my reduced row echelon form. This time it's of an augmented matrix, so I should be able to read off the solution just from the right hand column of that matrix. So we can see that A is a half, B is 7 over 2, and C is negative 10. This means we can now find R, because R, from the equation we had before, is just the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C, which will become the square root of a quarter plus 49 over 4 minus 10, which is the square root of, well, 49 plus 1 over 4 is 25 over 2, 25 over 2 minus 10 is 25 over 2 minus 20 over 2, which is the square root of 5 over 2. So our circle has center 1 half and 7 halves, if you like, or 1.5 uh, and 3.5, and radius of root 5 over 2, which is approximately 1.581. So the equation for our circle is therefore x minus a half squared plus y minus 7 over 2 squared is equal to 5 over 2. Don't forget we square the r at the end there. Okay, so in summary, we have we can actually construct all kinds of different things in this way. So, for example, you can find a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c through three points. So here's the, augment, here's the matrix system that you'd solve. Um, or you could do it with a cubic. Um, you could construct the cubic y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. This time you'd need four points. And here is the system that you would solve it with. Likewise, we could find the plane through three points. We've already done this one way before when we did cross products and direction vectors and things. But you can also find it directly using this method as well. So this time we know we need three points. So we'd take our general equation, ax plus by plus cz minus d equals zero. Substitute our points. And this is very similar to our first line equation we started with in the video. Solve it. And again, this is another example of one where it's a homogeneous system, so it's got zeros on the right hand side, where we expect to find infinitely many solutions corresponding to scalar multiples of the equation. So we'd take a particular value of t to get the equation we wanted. Um, one thing is worth mentioning though, the numerical errors that you get when you do Gaussian elimination, because when you put these numbers into a computer, there's going to be some amount of rounding and things go on. With these particular matrices, especially for the quadratic and the cubic, um, these matrices are called Vandermond matrices. And as we start going to higher degree polynomials, so cubic is degree 3 because the highest power is 3. But if you go to higher power ones, then these matrices start to become quite badly behaved in terms of the error that you start accumulating as you go through the, go through the Gaussian elimination procedure. Um, so this is something that if you study an area of mathematics called numerical analysis, you'd learn how to analyze the errors in things like Gaussian elimination and understand when you're at risk of accumulating numerical problems that will destroy your answer in the end. So just worth noting that we don't usually take this approach to very high degree polynomials for this very reason. There are other approaches to that. Okay, so hopefully you've again seen that matrices are useful for so much more than just solving random systems of equations. Uh, there are way more applications of solving just solving linear systems alone um, that we haven't gotten to here. For example, if we want if we want to solve equations for electrical circuits or traffic flow or fluid flow through a network of pipes, uh, want to look at ingredient constituents uh, in a in a meal um, and try and get certain amounts of different types of ingredients into your food so you get the right number, the right amount of carbohydrates and energy and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can set up all of these problems as systems of linear equations to solve. So you'll see a few more of these as we move through our course, but I think we'll call it quits for here for today. So we'll see you in the next video. Kakite anō.